This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Patch versus Miller. Ms. Patch, it's my understanding that you're suing Mr. Miller for injuries that you sustained when he fired a weapon at you and you fell and hurt yourself. You believe it's all his fault. You're asking this court to award you $15,000 for your past medicals, $5,000 for your future medicals, $20,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $40,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Miller, you believe that uh, she better be glad you didn't hit her. She's in the wrong place, wrong time, all her fault. This is not your fault. True? That's right, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me about that night that led you to uh, this incident. Well, Your Honor, I'm actually um, an ER nurse at the hospital, and I was lucky enough to get a job at the same hospital that my father works at, and he's an orthopedic surgeon, and he is, you know, since I was a little girl, I've wanted to be what he is. I want to save lives. I want to do what he does. And I um, should have had girls. <laughs> you, well, um, but uh, Your Honor, the night of the incident, um, I had worked a double shift and I was exhausted. It's yeoman's work. Nurses are our heroes for sure. They really are. And um, you know, my dad had called me earlier that day and said, come crash at my place tonight. You do not need to be driving home because I live an hour away. And um, he only lives about 10 minutes from the hospital. So he said, just come crash at my place. I don't trust you driving that late at night. You know, I was getting off my shift at 3 or 4 a.m. I'm exhausted. I can barely form sentences. And you, you got know, a good dad. <laughs> I do. At the end of my shift, I end up calling a ride share and I go outside and as soon as I get in the car, I pass out. I'm exhausted. And the next thing I know, I'm being, you know, woken by the driver saying, you know, we've arrived. So, so Mr. Miller, how long have you lived in this community? I've been in the community almost 10 years, Your Honor. And it has been a quiet community up until the night when this woman invaded the sanctity of my home. Ow. Outrageous. Well, what do you remember about this night? I was home. I was watching westerns. They remind me of a time when people took personal responsibility for their own actions. Oh, please. Yes, sir. All right. So, Miss Patch, uh, tell me, how did you? You're awakened by the driver in the car. Then what happens? I get out of the car. I am half asleep. I mean, I am, you know, it's kind of stumbling up the driveway. But you know, my dad had told me I'm going to leave the back door open. Just come on in. I'm going to wait up for you. So you know, I walk in and I start calling for dad. I'm like, Dad, like I'm home. Just want to let you know. And. All of a sudden, I see a silhouette of a man coming down the stairs, expecting it to be my father. And, you know, I can hear somebody, I can hear him yelling, but it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why my dad will be yelling at me. I'm coming in. It's super early in the morning. Okay. And I get closer to him and realize that's not my father. And, you know, before I could even react, this man, Mr. Miller, had cocked his gun and fired. And I cannot tell you. Your Honor, how scared to death I was for my own life. And here I am trying to save lives every day. And I'm scared for my own life at this point. So, so you went into Mr. Miller's home thinking it was your dad's house. Exactly, yes, Your Honor. Okay, so this really shocked you. I mean, when I say I was half asleep, I was full awake at this point after he cocked his gun and shot it at me. Now, Mr. Miller, tell me what's going on. How did you know that night that something untoward was happening? As I said, I was watching TV. I heard a noise, turned the TV down, and it, I could hear it clearly. Somebody was breaking into my back door. So I grabbed my breaking gun. The door was Excuse open. Me. It I, was open, I Mr. grabbed Miller. my gun like anyone would to defend myself anyone? and you, my property. You keep your gun ready? Exactly. That's why I have it. I'm, I'm a licensed gun owner, and uh, so when I came down the steps, I see an intruder in my kitchen. And you've got she, your gun in your hand at I've got point. my gun in my hand. I was yelling at her to stop. She kept moving towards me. I cocked the gun so she knew I was serious. I fired a warning shot out the back door. But there at were no point, lights on. What do you at think that was gonna, point, how did you know it was not gonna hit me in the head, Mr. At Miller? At that point, she turned around and ran. I heard a scream, I went out. She had fallen going down the steps, and she wasn't moving. I called 911. Your Honor, so, Ms. Patch, you... you run out the back door, and that's, that's how you're hurt? 
Yes. Tell me how that happened. So, like I said, I was shook to the core as soon as he had fired that shot, and I am running for the back door. I am, I'm in full on fight or flight mode. And, you know, it's pitch black dark, there are no lights on. And so I'm only going by memory of what, how I remember the back door being. And I run out the back door, trip over two of the steps, and end up landing on my left side and breaking my shoulder, but my, my shoulder and my ankle bone. Now, uh, Mr. Miller, you said she broke into your house. What did she do? I was in my own home. She came into my house. All I knew was that I, I thought I was in the middle of a home invasion. So you and were, you were making commands to her, exactly. stop, get out of my house. Yes. Did, did you hear yes. him say that, Ms. I Patch? I worked a double shift. She's a zombie. She works I'm, 24 I'm hours. I'm exhausted, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'm sorry she was tired, but that doesn't put the responsibility on me. She still broke into my house. The door is open. You keep saying breaking in. You I know, I, I've done I a lot of felonies it, in my time. A break-in is they knocked that thing off the hinge. Your Honor, at that point, I didn't know if I had locked up for the night yet or not. But I know that she 4 was... She, I didn't invite her into my home. She didn't knock or ring the doorbell. She came in... I thought it was my father's into house. ...into the privacy of my home. Were All you I frightened? Did, Yes, I was frightened for my life. Maybe if you turned a light on, you'd have seen that I was just an exhausted You know, nurse. when Ms. somebody Sass, breaks talk, talk into your home, you don't turn talk the light me. on. You don't turn the light on and say, here, shoot at me. But you, you, fire, you fired a gun at her? I did, I did not fire the gun at her. I fired a warning shot out the it back door. It was pitch door. black dark. You don't know that if you weren't, I, like, I'm shooting at my head. I'm a train. Your Honor, completely Ms. irresponsible. Dr. Patch, please stand and come to the podium. You were in your home that night. I, I live in the same community, yes, sir. I've I, been there I, quite some time. I've been at the hospital 10 years plus. So this is a pretty quiet community, right? All the homes look the same. They're track homes, and okay. I understand the mistake. They all look exactly the same. I told her early in the evening, I'll leave the back door open for you. So she did exactly what even in her diminished state, she would have done. How'd you find out something bad happened to your daughter? I prepped some food, assuming she'd be, be home at a point where we could at least engage, but it got later and later, and I fell asleep on the couch. In the midst of the night, I was awakened by a loud boom, which I found out was a shot, but I realized then, my daughter's not here. And I ran to Mr. Miller's backyard, and there he was, waving his gun, hollering, yelling, and screaming. And thank and God my Mr. dad Mr. Miller, is that what knows? you were doing? Your Honor, I was standing there. I just realized that she was hurt. She was hurt because she fell. She was because lifeless. Because she had been she was in laying my home. I thought, my I, daughter. Had, I thought and I then I called 911, and even though it wasn't his place to do it, I put my gun down when he, my when he said to. And you know, as a father, the first thing I taught my child was to be responsible for your own actions. And apparently this man I'm going forgot to, protect to teach that my to his daughter. daughter. You know, it's, it's not often that I get two dads in here. This is a different dynamic for me. Uh, I'm a dad too, I've got three sons. Personal responsibility is important for everyone. Gun owners, as well as uh, folks who mistakenly walk into somebody's house. But, Your Honor, you will continue to protect your family and your dear ones. Yes, I completely agree. I was protecting Miller, my home and myself. He's pretty lucky, Your Honor. The fact that, I mean, he I, I think everybody's kind of lucky, don't you think? I mean, I'm very lucky that he didn't, you know, accidentally shoot me in the head and I wouldn't be here today. Hold on. But, Mr. Miller, I got to tell you something. She doesn't look like a rowdy intruder coming in to harm you, at least you, here Hunter. today. Amen. So uh, it, it, it takes it, yes. me some time to get my arms around yes, your this Honor. In the vicious light, in the light of day, nurse in the light that gets of day, in your house. Armed sheriff right here, yes, we feel safe. At 3 o'clock in the morning, when an unknown intruder comes into your house unannounced, a nurse, you Honor, don't in feel... scrubs. Now, how did I know she was a nurse? Your Honor, in your scrubs. Honor. Ms. Patch, tell me about your injuries. You've got your arm uh, wrapped up there. Tell me what happened. You know, when I fell down the stairs, I fell on my left side, and um, the only thing that was louder than Mr. Miller shooting his gun at me was the popping of my ankle bone. It was... I've never been in that excruciating pain before. 
It baffles me that this really didn't have to happen if he had turned on a light. Dr. Patch, you submitted an animation to this court to explain your daughter's injuries. I want to put that up on the plasma screen and talk me through it. Tell me what we're looking at. Yes, sir. Thank you. May I? Could you come over to the plasma? As an orthopedist, I have access to these animations. And as my daughter ran off of the platform, she experienced an everting or an outturning of her ankle that actually caused the tips of both the tibia and the fibula to be broken completely off. Now, and come through the skin? Through the skin, a compound fracture. The, the uniqueness of this injury is that some people never fully recover. Oh, I know that was but, painful. I see, I see your face, Miss Patch. I can barely reliving watch it, this. Your Honor. So, doctor, what do you do to repair that? There are pins, there are plates, and some people have to live with those the rest of their lives. The silliness, silliest things, if you go through the airport security, you're going to beep, you're going to get patted down. It's, it, it affects your life in a hundred different ways. Just How because of this happen? trigger happy maniac. Sir, you can return to your podium. So, Mr. Miller, I mean, this is, this is a bad result. Your heart's got to tug a little bit with a young woman with this kind of injury. It's a permanent Your Honor, injury. I, I feel bad for her injury. That doesn't make it my responsibility. Don't you think your reaction was a little bit too much? But he has some responsibility. If it had been an armed invader, would we be even questioning about this now? Or we would... Excuse me, Your Honor, it was not an armed invader, and I don't think we do what-ifs in the courtroom. This is my neighbor, Your Honor. It's a we gated community. We have attended homeowners association meetings before. We okay. have a wonderful community. And has seen me, Your we... Honor. I'm not hard to miss. I'm not going to lie. I'm six foot tall, and I'm a redhead. He probably would have seen me had he really looked. So, so, doctor, you said about the homeowners association, you've seen Mr. Miller before? Mr. Miller is a happy participant in our homeowners meeting, and he makes no bones about the fact that he is ready, willing, and able to defend anyone and everyone in our community because he is a gun owner. And, and he you know, is and very, I don't, very and quick Honor, to I tell. I do not apologize for that. In America, it's my legal right to own but and be trained to use the gun it, and to Honor. use a gun to protect myself and my property. Well, maybe lock your and, door and so before... And so that y'all... So that y'all understand, in our country, as long as people use guns legally and responsibly, the law protects them. Absolutely, sir. But you said responsibly. Exactly. Mr. Miller, is it fair or unfair to say you're a gun enthusiast? I'm grateful for my right to keep and be trained to use a firearm and to protect myself and my property. The problem is, is not everyone is responsible and frankly, not everybody should have a gun. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you Miss Pat, you've got to prove three things. You've got to prove that a wrong by the defendant, Mr. Miller, caused your harm. You put up evidence today that you simply made a mistake and went into the wrong house. You went in thinking that your dad was going to greet you. Instead, you get a gun fired at you and you run out, trip and fall, tear your body up, and you're going to pay for it the rest of your life. Mr. Miller, you believe you got the right to defend your home. You didn't know what was happening that night. What you did know is that you needed to get that person out of your house. You could have shot her but you decided to shoot over her head to make sure she knew that you were not playing and she'd have an opportunity to escape unharmed. The legal bottom line here is that everyone must be careful to take care of their own safety, both by mistake and by gun owner. Here you were wrong, you picked the wrong house and you are very fortunate that he did not shoot you. You, on the other hand, you had every right to defend yourself, and although you may have overreacted, the law does not hold you responsible under these circumstances for defending your home. 
I find against the plaintiff, despite the severity of your injuries, the law compels me to find against you and in your favor, Mr. Yes. Miller. That Thank is you, my Your final Honor. verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> yes. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Andrew Finkelstein has to say. The x-rays of the plaintiff's horrific fracture of her leg and her dad's testimony regarding the severity of the breaks were heart-wrenching. But this case illustrates an important legal principle. Just because you are severely hurt on someone's property does not mean it's their fault. The plaintiff's actions of walking in the wrong house put herself in harm's way. The defendant had a right to protect himself when he felt he was in imminent danger.